Welcome to Bougie TV. I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Bella. Here on Bougie TV, we discuss topics covering today's beverage space from non-alcoholic beverages to spirits and everything in between. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Bougie TV. Of course, I'm your host, Nick Tangora. My co-host, Bella Barbaro. Hello. What's going on? Not much. What about you? I'm just chilling, drinking my bougie. Oh, me too. So good. I'm obsessed, this, especially it's this so berry good. flavor. I was just going to say, oh. I think the berry flavor is my favorite. Has to be. So good. Literally, you can taste like all the raspberry and the mm. blueberries and... And it's like, literally, it's like, it's a meal, but it's, it's only all, 10 calories. It's all the berries. <laughs> it's so good. It's it, all the berries. And it makes you feel good. It makes you yes, feel good. Yes, bubbles without the buzz. And I'm it's loving amazing. this packaging. Like that little, tribu- the little tribute to Italia. Italiano. Come on. Hey, some penne. <laughs> well, of course, Bougie TV, <laughs> the home of all your pop culture news. We're going to yes. be chatting with trending celebrities, all the good stuff that's going on in pop culture and in the world you right now. It. Plus, we have a very special guest later we coming do. on the show, El Winter. So we are very looking forward exciting. to chatting with her. Yes. So uh, why don't we take a message from our sponsors? We'll be right back after this. Elle Winter. She is absolutely amazing. We're so excited because she's here live on Bougie TV. What's going on, Elle? Thanks so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. We are so happy to have you. You've got your Bougie there, so you're going to try it for the first time on camera. Oh my God, okay. So let's open this. Let's get that. going to explode. I already have that. Safer than champagne because you don't lose an eye accidentally. There we go. (laughs) We got to cheers it up. Cheers. 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 So happy to have you. Go ahead and taste it. What do we think? Um, so yummy. So good, good, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, You've got like, what, the berry flavor? The berry flavor. Ooh. It's good, right? What are you guys drinking? I Same flavor? I also have the berry. This is so good. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, I have my new hyperfixation drink for a while. Yeah. <laughs> 10 calories. 10 calories? So you could have, I don't know. You have a lot. <laughs> Zero sugar. Zero, Zero carbs. It's basically Zero a wellness juice. Yeah, it's yeah. honestly, it tastes so good. We were just talking, though, before, because you are from California. You spent mm-hmm. a lot of time at, what is that, Air One? I, I do love me some Air One. It's Ooh. a problem. What's what your favorite you, yeah. thing from there? My favorite, I like the hot bar. So they have an amazing Ooh. hot bar with, like, a great food. Mm-hmm. I go there too often. Oh my and it's just, like, a great place. Like, I run into everyone I know. It's like, who needs to go out? A hot bar. That's just, like, <laughs> yeah, when it's the a bartender hot bar. is hot. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know, yeah. Yeah. Oh I don't know what a hot bar hot is. Bar. I mean, everyone at Erewhon is very attractive. So really? It makes sense. Really? Is that kind of, do you think that's, like, part of the employment process? I, I bet it is. There's something like in the fine Like, you've got to be at least an eight. Yeah, yeah, In the application process. I don't know. I don't know. I've never been there. They walk in, take one look, like, Next. When they're charging like twenty nine dollars for a kale salad, please, that ain't my place. No, they oh, really get away yeah. with murder there. That's what do you like, get? What do you get at Air One? They like have smoothies. Great, uh, the smoothies are good. What mm. else? They have a vegan eggplant lasagna. That might sound really gross to most people. Eggplant. You've just insulted every Italian. <laughs> Egg. We're done here, right? Yeah, I really can't <laughs> talk about my eating habits on air because it's just the most Bo- dumb. Both of our reactions are like, relatable. Eggplant. We felt insulted. 
egg. It's really good. You can't diss it till you try it. It's like yeah. cashew cheese. I think you know what I say. I say don't yuck someone else's yum. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, but I think totally. we can yeah. yuck that. One. Except for oh, like sardines. I think we can yuck that. I think we can. Yeah, I think we might be able to yuck that. Oh, one. Next gosh. time you're in LA, you're gonna try it and you're gonna All be right. thanking me. Okay, okay. I'm All open. Right. I'll be open to it. We'll be open. It's to It's amazing that and the Haley Bieber smoothie. Oh, I have yet. Oh, I actually did. I did try a sip. Is it good? Very sweet. Oh, okay. I like sweet smoothies. Like that's good. There's another great place called Sunlight. Cafe mm. in West Hollywood, okay. and it's a great smoothie spot. Well, do you ever run into celebrities go. at these Air One places? All the time, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh Every gosh. celebrity you can imagine, I see just around. It's it's such a wild city in that way. Who have you, mm. who have you bumped into on the street? Shawn Mendes, Justin wow. Bieber. I was like walking down the street, saw just so many people. Oh and I've been actually going to LA like since I was 13 years old because I got my start with Disney Channel and stuff. And all the filming we did for them was was in LA. And it was just always such a, a wild experience. Every time I went, I would meet so many of, of the artists that I grew up loving and, and really respected. So it's a really inspiring city because everyone's in entertainment. And uh, it's just, it's unique in that way. Yeah, it definitely seems like it. You mentioned Disney Channel. What was that whole world <laughs> like yeah. when you entered the Disney world? Because uh, you were so young yeah. when that when that whole experience came about. How did that, how did that journey start? It was just such such a dream come true. You know, I grew up loving the Disney Channel and to, to be oh, yeah. chosen for mm -hmm. a program of theirs was like everything I could have ever dreamt of as a, a young girl. And they were really so incredible and so supportive of me. And, and they had supported me and, and my career until Radio Disney, I guess, shut down right during the pandemic. So they had supported my journey through so many different stages. And I, I so value them and, and appreciate what they've done for me. I just love it. Do you see it. them making a comeback, Radio Disney? Do you see I that really ever? I really hope so. Yeah. Because I think it was such an incredible platform for young people and to have like a safe space. And they just encourage such positivity. And it was a really healthy place platform yeah and um station so I, I really hope it makes a comeback radio disney yeah. i feel like was how i actually heard of justin bieber the first time ever. yeah i, yeah. I think they were like too. one of the like first one time was yeah. playing on yeah. that stage oh my God, yeah, yeah. i think they were one of the first to play one time and i remember mm -hmm. hearing that a and bop. it was through radio disney and being like oh i can get behind this like yeah. this is good yeah they just and, really champion new artists yeah and it's it's a really special place that that does that i think it's rare to find platforms like take risks on people and and do that so i don't yeah. know i love them and i love disney world i love disneyland i love disney <laughs> oh, oh i love disney well the the pandemic has been was big change for you because yeah, of yeah. radio disney but mm -hmm. also you dropped an ep yes. yeah no uh tell yeah, us a little yeah, bit about no. that title because it's a, okay. it, it, it's a bit of a contra contradiction there mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you'll never realize how much you say it until you start you know paying attention to it right. but i had written that song and i um it was the lead single of my debut project and I was super excited to get it out. It was basically, I had gone through a breakup and I really wanted to reclaim the narrative of the breakup and you know, tell my side of the story and that I was totally fine and happy and thriving and living life. And I was super excited to release the song. I had finally moved to LA from New York and this is March, 2020 at this point. And Yano came out a couple weeks into, into March and I come back to New York to perform it at some events and then the pandemic, everything shuts yeah. down. And so I'm doing a bunch of live stream shows, but I had all these tours planned and everything. And you know, it, it was a really isolating time, but yeah, no, connected me to so many people and so many supporters and made me feel so much less alone during that. So yeah, no, just hold such a special place in my heart. And it did before it came out and then for what it did for me during the pandemic. and really connected me with so many people. It was just so special. Social media was yeah. wild during the pandemic. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Everybody was Insane. making bread and learning Spanish. Oh my I God. Mean, it was bread. fantastic. Yeah. I didn't do any of that. I like, learned how <laughs> to play I. piano and then like, I'm like, where'd it go? Yeah. Like, I was yeah. so good doing so much. I was, I was doing so well with my bread making. I wish, and then... <laughs> I wish I learned to cook during the pandemic. Like I really, I missed the boat. Yeah, cause you're spending a lot of money at Air One. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Air God! One. Yes, I need. I did bake some things with my sister. We we got our baking yeah. game on. Yeah, during the pandemic, some protein cookies. 
you're like, are you like very healthy? Yeah, like, you're very I, healthy. I, I, yeah, I'm very, very healthy. What's yeah. going on? I, I mentioned about the McDonald's snack wrap a couple minutes before we started, yes. and you were like, "What is that?" And I'm no idea. still offended. <laughs> then she's we are both social. Then like, she says what she said about lasagna, <laughs> and like I don't know. I know. I should just not talk about my eating habits, guys. No, I'm just digging like, myself like, into a deep hole. No, healthy. good for you if you're enjoying it. I say all the power to yeah. you. Yeah, I honestly, try, I try to be healthy. It's easy in LA because everyone's very healthy there. Yeah, mm-hmm. and everyone's Green beautiful. Juice on and, every corner. <laughs> yeah, it's it's overwhelming. A bit. On. Yeah, a bit. And everyone's got like the same doctor. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, doctor. that's just crazy. Like I couldn't even find a regular doctor. Like when I moved there, mm-hmm. I needed a doctor, like a, a regular internist, whatever. And I'm like, I cannot find a regular doctor. But you can go to a doctor for like anything else there. Yeah. That's yeah. easy to You're find. You're like, I need a doctor. Like, oh, like a plastic surgeon. <laughs> like, no. You're like, no, no. 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 Like, like, what about I wanna... just like a dentist? <laughs> <laughs> like, I need a physical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a wild place, but it's fun in doses. Yeah. Well, I'm back back to, back to the album though, the EP. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no. So. So it's it's so fun. I love your style of music. Thank I love you. your pop music. It's so great. And you have this uh, this breakup anthem mm-hmm. that is very female empowering. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that project. Yeah. So the last project I released is my Yes, Please EP. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to continue just writing songs about my own experiences. But, you know, not only empowering myself through telling my own stories, but hopefully creating music that inspires my listeners to feel strong and confident and have fun. I mean, that's what I look for when I'm looking for music to listen to and motivate me and make me feel good. So this project was super inspired by by all of that and also really influenced by the 60s and a lot of the influences I I grew up listening to. So it was super fun to play with and the aesthetics of that time Mm -hmm. period. So Who were some of those influences? Like Leslie Gore, The Supremes, Mm -hmm. The Marvelettes, all of the amazing girl groups. I think it was just such an incredible time for for women in particular. At the, the first time they were able to really tell their own stories and have agency and use yeah. their voices. So it was a really a really cool thing to, to pull up on. So I'm excited I'm back in the studio now and working on new music and getting ready to release some stuff soon. So oh, it'll that's be great. Fantastic. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah. And and I would say like what is it what does it mean to you when you get to see young girls especially mm-hmm. who look up to you? And they listen to your music and they can connect mm. to your lyrics and they're supporting you the, the way that you look up to these other artists or the way that you may have looked up to an l winter when you were you know six seven eight years old even older yeah. than that you know so it's like what is what is it like when that that young fan runs up to you they ask for that autograph they see you they want to support your music what is that like it's really it's really special and it's so rewarding you know i I looked up to so many artists growing up and powerful female artists yeah. like Christina Aguilera, Avril mm, Lavigne, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce. I mean, these were all of my my idols, and and I I saw them doing what they loved and owning it and being totally. so confident mm. and using their voices, telling their stories, and I felt like I could do that too, and I was so inspired by them. So if I could do that for another young young woman out there that that means the world and that means everything to me and that, that's why I do it and I think it's it's so special there's nothing like music where you can sing a song write a song about your experience perform it and it could be for someone totally different from you mm. you you know are from totally different walks of life not not much in common but you can connect through a story through a song through a yeah. message and it's there's nothing more unifying i think than music and i just love connecting with other people even it's, if a, it's universal a stranger language. on the street yeah yeah, yeah. It is a yeah. Universal language. it's amazing it is it just feels so good like i love when i'm down i love listening to music and i see so so happy i just i just want to do that for other people through my I music that. yeah i love that well bella feeling. i mean you yeah. also same boat. Yeah, same boat. I'm also a singer songwriter, so everything you're saying I relate to, and everything that. like that. What is your? I love asking like other artists like, what's your songwriting process? Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, how do you go into? So it depends on the song. I'm always okay. writing music. Like I'm always in my notes app, just same. writing things down. Yes. I'll be like out with a friend. I'm like, just give me a second. Yeah, right. go I got an idea for something. It's like they're telling me about their like deepest, darkest problems. Yeah, I'm like, this is really inspiring me. <laughs> you know? This is good for a song. Give me one second. <laughs> um, but sometimes it's just things I already have in my notes, and I'll mm-hmm. go to the studio and come in with a concept or something. And yeah, I'm usually with another songwriter and producer, and we kind of flesh it out together. Mm. Or I just go to the studio like a blank slate I mean I still carry whatever I'm going through with yeah. me but mm-hmm. I listen to music we jam out with different melodies and mm-hmm. instruments and then I kind of let those inspire me and and kind of fuel the yeah. concept and kind of 
light a, a spark in me and and see where it goes but yeah. it's it's so different really every session every session and I think yeah. collaborating with people is so important because mm-hmm. it's it's so fun to like be with another songwriter mm-hmm. tell them what's going on in my life and like they'll even describe like their perspective on it mm-hmm. it's just a different take and yeah you know they just add something new to the story and a new way to look at it whether it's like a word a phrase i think it's yeah. it's just so great i love collaborating yeah. we should collaborate we should yeah. we should collaborate it's happening it's right happening here at Bougie Bougie TV. TV. come Bougie on TV is it ever scary though as an artist for you because like, i can speak to my own experience as well but to be so vulnerable you mm-hmm. know in your music where you're having to you want to be honest with your fans you want to be honest with with your situation and the life situations that you're in but it's scary when you've got to put that all on display yeah. mm-hmm. for the world to hear and to to chime in on mm-hmm. you know and and that's scary i mean i know for myself being yeah. honest in my lyrics and being honest in my work mm-hmm. can be frightening because there's so much going on that even though we live public lives mm-hmm. there's that little bit that we try to keep private because we try yeah, to own yeah. that but then it doesn't feel super authentic when we hold that in Mm -hmm. so i mean for you guys is that is that scary is that you know when you have to go that vulnerable um i mean for me i'm a very like i wear my heart on my sleeve type of person so i (laughs) (laughs) um so i'm like i'm just i feel a lot of feelings yeah and i know a lot of people out there definitely feel a lot of things too and maybe like you said they're scared to say it so i like to think that i could be maybe one of those people that says or sings things yeah. that people are thinking or can't. That they can connect with it. Yeah, connect with it. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think it just, you have to write as if no one's going to hear it and like write from your heart. Yeah. And if they do, like the, the people that, that need it will hear it and it'll be really important for them mm-hmm. and they'll connect and feel less alone yeah. what they're going through. It's so important. Do you find songwriting to be therapeutic? Oh, so, yeah. so therapeutic. Mm-hmm. I write so many songs that I don't even release. I don't even make into songs. And I just love writing out how I feel. I think everyone should just write all the time. It's mm-hmm. such an amazing mental health It's like a diary tool. that rhymes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> diary that yeah. rhymes. No, there's, there's something about it. It works. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. good for the soul. Yeah. What about you, Bella? Yeah, I could agree. I'm constantly writing things all the time. I write poems. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you do that too. I love But I love like, poems. I feel like I'll turn poems into songs. Yeah, it helps a lot too. Yeah. I just think it, it, it's just that element of, and you're totally right, you have to write it as if like it's just for you. Mm-hmm. You have to because if you're starting to keep other people in mind, that's when you start to lose sight yeah. of what you're doing it for because at the end of the day, we're all, we're all musicians, we're all creators for ourselves first, of course, mm-hmm. like because this is what our calling is. This is what we're meant, we're meant to do. Mm-hmm. It's amazing that there's people who want to listen to it. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. But the first and foremost reason that we're doing it is because – it's our passion. We love it. We crave yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But it's so true what you say about like you have to write like it's like it's just for you because when you keep all those other people in mind, mm-hmm. then you start to compromise, you know, on your lyrics and mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. you might be now telling a story that's not entirely true to you, but you're feeling you're trying to go a more relatable aspect. But I think when you are your authentic self, whether or not people yes, can relate yes, to totally. it. I think people are going to be drawn to it. Whether yeah. or not they can relate to it is one yeah. thing, but they're always going to be drawn to authenticity. And people yeah. are seeing, yes. especially now, they are seeing through the BS. I was about to say, yeah. with social yeah. media and everything, yeah. people don't want things that are curated and mm-hmm. and contrived. You know, I think yeah. what always works and has worked just over the years, people want want to see like a real human being. Yeah. They yeah. want to like understand the human experience. I feel like that's just like the mission in life and like through music you want to be able to like hear someone's song and pain and truth and you want to hear their their story you know yeah. so you kind of just have to tune it all out and yeah be honest open and just give it your all well tell us what is what is next what is for next? Al winter what i know it's next? a loaded question mm-hmm. because you never know <laughs> yeah. what Dinner is gonna tonight. happen yeah um. <laughs> You, you, you do really. Tomorrow. The vegan egg plant lasagna is next for me. <laughs> on air one. Air one. You, you do never know what is next, what's yeah. going to happen. Uh, things can change like that yeah. at all times. But what do you have on the calendar right now? Yeah, so I'm finishing up this new body of work, and I'm super excited about it. It's been a long time in the making, and I'm, I'm working on some music that I'm really proud of, and it's all just telling my, my own stories, coming from my personal experiences. So... I do feel like it has that authenticity. I'm just super excited to to get that in the world, and I'll probably start releasing that top of the year. Lots of fun visuals. That's also a really fun part of releasing music too. Mm-hmm. Is like creating a whole world around 
the song. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. And I'm getting a, a lot of these in LA. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. Sure. We're gonna send you all <laughs> my the next yes. my next house party that all I don't bougie. throw. <laughs> we will send them to you, although you can get bougie this will, everywhere. Like, incentivize me to to throw a party. <laughs> and it's I literally like I'm obsessed with these things, especially because like yeah. I know for me, like I was especially like in this industry, we have to go to events. Mm -hmm. Like it's mm -hmm. part of the job. Yeah. It's part of the business. Like you mm -hmm. have to go to events. And I always feel like you need something in your hand because mm -hmm. if you don't have a, a drink in your hand, you're gonna have your phone in your hand. Right. And then when you have your phone in your hand, yeah. you like, you don't seem approachable and you seem like mm -hmm. you want to be anywhere else but where you're at. Yeah. So you do need something in your hand. And I think yeah. having a bougie mm -hmm. where they not only they look great. The packaging is fantastic, but they mm -hmm. actually taste delicious. Yeah. And they're 10 calories, so you're not going to feel yeah. bad when you go through one and then you go through 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, and you keep like drinking water. them and you're like, it's not like you're like 3,000 calories later mm -hmm. out of your awkwardness of standing you somewhere. You probably don't you could feel like yeah. it doesn't bring you down. Can I you say know? something? Yeah. I have been drinking, honestly, yeah. you're talking about being authentic. I've been drinking <laughs> this all day. All day. No bloat. Wow. Like, and that's... Yeah, no bloat, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm feeling great. That's crazy. So you think I'm... <laughs> I'm very excited. So are yeah. these ones like in stores? And Everywhere, stuff? yeah. Everywhere. Wow. So you. you What's that liquor store? It's not a. It's like a beverage store in L.A. Oh, Bevmo. Bevmo. That's very Mo. popular in California. Mm -hmm. They have them. It's like a huge store. We only know Bevco. Oh okay. no! No, sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. That's Bevmo. Oh my bad. <laughs> <I'm dead. laughs> It's close though. Dead. Mm -hmm. Very close. <laughs> uh, really quick though, want to get back to the Disney stuff for a second. Mm -hmm. um, Disney has and and child actors and and mm -hmm. just child musicians and people kids in the entertainment industry kind of have a reputation of everything is great until it suddenly isn't, mm -hmm. right? And then they feel like they have to kind of do a one eighty, like if they were one image mm -hmm. in yeah. order to differentiate themselves and to yeah. be grown and to be an adult. They suddenly have to be rebellious, mm -hmm. right? They gotta like they have to have you know crazy makeup, crazy outfits, crazy different music, go a full different style. Where it's like, oh my gosh, everything was one way, and now suddenly it's like this. I'm yeah, like, what? Um, you're not doing that. No, and I love <laughs> that and can appreciate that you are consistent all the way through. And it's mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like when in your time of being young and in something like Disney under that massive. Uh, umbrella that you felt like you it feel like it felt like we were always getting the authentic authentic version of you mm -hmm. not like Thank we're you. now getting it do you Thank understand you. what I mean by that yeah I think when I I started my career with Disney and I actually had even started when I was younger and I, I did different commercial work around New York I was so happy doing what I loved and I was also yeah. in school at the time and I um I just really loved pursuing my dreams and just performing and that was who I was and I wasn't like stifling myself in any way like being in the like in my career it wasn't you know neglecting a part of me and I wasn't being my true self like that yeah. really was like I was so happy and I'm still so happy to be doing what I love so I'm just like authentically just showing up and you have to. writing music performing it connecting with others and that's all it is it's not just to become some different version to break yeah. out of some mold there was never anything like that i'm just literally like so no, grateful you, to be able to like you've been do consistent this. <laughs> yeah. you've been consistent and you've mm -hmm. been consistently great and i think that's Thank why you. a that's lot of people as, as we are are so yeah. drawn to you are drawn Thank to your art you. are drawn to your music because you've been consistent all the way through in your yeah. career thus Thank far you. you still have so much more to go and we are so excited to continue to watch Thank your journey you. Thank so you it's guys. all it's all really yes. exciting stuff it's all really Very exciting, exciting stuff uh one last thing though while you were with disney mm -hmm. was there ever a celebrity run in a celebrity oh, uh, crush maybe a slide oh, in the dms uh, like <laughs> come on give us the exclusive give it to bougie oh god i don't know if i have any good tea for you guys come on i mean selena gomez is a really cool cool meet that yeah. was a cool Disney. Connect. She's got to be nice, right? I heard she's. The I sweetest. I love Selena Gomez. I'm oh. such a Selena Gomez stan. She's the cutest. Yeah, she's the best. Beautiful. I mean, everyone oh. is so just so nice. Like I'm just. Yeah. Oh. No, no bad experiences. No bad experiences. Yeah. That's no. fine. As long as there's no That's bad. Fine. It's you know? been a long we're journey. We're not rooting for the bad experiences. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we're just inquiring if there was any. If there's any. No, there really, there really is not. I actually did a TikTok series about just 
my experience on Disney and I, I started just doing more like industry stories on TikTok. Yeah. So it was so fun, yeah. like during the pandemic to go down memory lane and people mm-hmm. really enjoyed them. And the like the truth was in all those videos, it was like it was just a great time. Like everyone yeah. was great. Like I was literally living my dreams. Like they gave me such an amazing platform. Fans I, I still have to this day and I like so that have been on this journey with me and I just so appreciate them and everything. So it's just like yeah. it's all been just wonderful. The tea is, is is no not tea. hot. <laughs> no tea. A very, no tea. very lukewarm. No tea. Yeah. Just thing a smoothie. <laughs> From Air One. Yeah. <laughs> Just a smoothie. From Air One. And I want El- my own Air One smoothie. That that's the goal. You want your own. That's like, the my goal, goal yeah. used that's to be cool. Madison that's a Square good Garden. Goal to have. Now it's an Air One. Smoothie. Is that on your vision board? We were learning about vision boards today. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. MSG. You know, I also realized Super Bowl. Half okay. Time. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Good one. Yes. That is the goal. That is the vision board. Mm. The manifesting that. I've realized I'm very good at manifesting things I don't want. So I'm gonna start putting <gasps> the energy manifest. towards wow. things I do want. Like I, I have a lot of fear of like random things. Mm-hmm. Then I manifest it for myself. Like fears like what? Like I almost got carjacked in LA. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Were you oh, in no. the car? I tell this story like way too much, and it's really not that scary, but it was very traumatizing oh my for god. me. Well, Okay, I'll dramatize it up. Yeah, I mean, okay. come on now. Um, I was driving back from the studio. <laughs> it's like 11 p.m. in LA. Mm-hmm. And we're stopped at a light, and some guy comes up to, like, gets out of the car and starts storming towards the car. Tries to open the door, uh-huh. hits the car, saying, You honked us. We didn't honk. It was a quiet street. Oh he tries to, like, get in the car, and it, someone's behind us, so we can't move. You can't move at all. We you can't, can't move forward, forward, forward backwards. Oh, and my God. Finally, the car starts moving. He's like, What's going on? This has been, like, held up for so long. And then. There's finally one behind us. We back up and get out. It was very scary. And then you ran him oh, over? Yeah. <laughs> they and can't say that were... on TV. <laughs> Tell us after. <laughs> no, no, no. We drove home. I was <laughs> terrified oh and God, I manifested well. it. So That's scary. Yeah. That's terrible. So I need to start fearing things like Madison Square Garden. <laughs> ah, like, I'm really sold scared. Out <laughs> was, wait, I'm sorry. Was carjacking on your vision board? <laughs> you know, I, I get very worried about those things. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I watch a lot of TV shows that I should not be watching, like oh crime god. shows. Yeah, I'm not like emotionally. You're like able a, for that. You're. I don't think you know this, but you might be in like an Italian mom. Like oh my god. it's all about yeah. the fear. Yeah, yeah. Oh I see. Gosh. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Except I wouldn't be doing vegan eggplant lasagna. No, right? that's where so, we cross the like line. Sacrilegious. No. That's where. That's yeah. Then it's your Italian, just like by marriage mm. or something by, like that. By marriage. Yeah, pseudo Italian um, mom. Yeah. Well, Elle, thank you so much for being with thank us. You. We look forward to continuing to watch your Thanks journey. For you are fantastic. Let's Amazing. cheers to Elle. Thank cheers. you guys for having Thanks for being here. Me. I cut yeah. them. I- Ooh, yes, on bad luck. <laughs> Keep it here on Bougie TV. We'll be right back. for watching this episode of bougie tv mm. that was a really good conversation she's her. awesome what she's a great so artist i'm so excited to watch her journey yeah she me is too. up and coming and rising yes. very quickly actually yeah, good for it's her. cool to get her thoughts on everything especially the 100%. disney world of stuff so yeah definitely she had a lot to share and for i look sure. forward to chatting with her again more in the future definitely. right here on great bougie girl. tv we're breaking everything down plus you could be just like us and yes. sip on your bougies because bougie is for sale Everywhere. Everywhere. So go onto the store, get your can of bougie. It's like bougie on a budget because this thing is <laughs> it's affordable. On a budget. It's not going to break the bank and you're going to love it. And also, it's not going to break your uh, your pants seams because it's only like 10 calories. Yeah, zero and sugar, zero, sugar. zero carbs. So good. So win-win, good. Win-win, people. Bougie TV. Follow us on all the socials. We'll see you guys next time on Bougie TV. See you later.